we're going to talk about the basics of probability. And this presentation is in two parts, part one and part two. So we are now doing part one of probability basics. So we start with a question, what is probability? And I'm largely going to be reading from this document here and then filling in little explanations here and there. We're not going to be using the calculator except for some very simple calculations. So what is probability? Probability, the probability that something will happen means the likelihood that it will happen. And we assign numerical values to probability. If something is impossible, it means it cannot happen, it has a probability of zero. So the example I have here says, I am a male over the age of 50. The probability that I will give birth to a baby is zero. It's just not going to happen. Another example might be, what's the probability you can be in two places at one time? That's going to be zero. If we look down here at the second bullet, it says if something is certain, it has a probability of one. So the example we have here is the probability that I will die someday, hopefully not soon, but someday, is one. It's going to happen. Everybody dies. So the next bullet says everything else has a probability between zero and one. So in other words, at one extreme you have things that are impossible, at another extreme you have things that are certain, and everything else is in between. So the closer a probability is to one, the more likely that that event will occur. So the example here is the probability that a rich person will drive a nice car is probably pretty close to one. Uh, somebody could probably figure out what that probability what that probability actually is, but it's probably pretty close to one. It's it's probably almost certain. Okay, what are we going to talk about next? One way to think about probability problems is to put them in terms of percentages, because probability is a difficult concept for a lot of people. And so it's often simpler to think of probability problems as percentage problems. So that's what it says here. With many basic probability problems, they can also be thought of as percentage problems because the answer will be the same. This is very important. Here's an example. There is a bag of M&Ms. It holds six blue M&Ms, four red M&Ms, and five yellow M&Ms. If you choose one of the M&Ms without looking, what is the probability you choose a yellow M&M? This is a very common kind of question. And if you're not sure how to think about it as a probability problem, you can think of it as a percentage problem. So let's change the question to ask, what is the percentage of yellow M&Ms in the bag? The percentage of yellow M&Ms equals the number of yellow M&Ms, which we see is five, it said right here, there's five yellow M&Ms, divided by the total number of M&Ms in the bag, which is 15, because there were six blue, four red, and five yellow. Those add up to 15, so the total number of M&Ms in the bag is 15. The number of yellows is five, so the percentage of yellow M&Ms is 5 over 15, which is 33%. That can also be expressed as 0 0.33 or as the fraction 1 third. Well, here is the big discovery. This is also the answer to the probability problem. There is no difference. So the percentage of yellow M&Ms, I'm just looking at this right here, is 33% or 0 0.33 or one-third, and the probability of choosing a yellow M&M when you choose at random is exactly the same thing. So that's the main message I want you to get from this, is that percentage and probability are almost always interchangeable. And for many students, it's easier to think of a problem in terms of percentages than it is to think in terms of probability. Now let's talk about something called complements. And you'll notice, here's this word complements. It's not like complimenting somebody, like saying, you look good today. 
It's a different kind of complement, and the spelling is a little bit different. This complement has an E right here. The other complement has an I right there. So what is a complement? Complements are two events which can be thought of as perfect opposites. Now, this is not a textbook definition, but it's hopefully a simple way to think about this that will make it uh, more understandable for you. So here's an example. What is the complement of this statement? The Giants will win their next game. The complement is the Giants will not win their next game. So you can see these statements are perfect opposites. And by the way, you'll notice I didn't say the Giants will lose their next game because it's possible for the game to be rained out or for it to be suspended, something like that. But it is perfectly correct to say that the two complements are that the Giants will win their next game and the Giants will not win their next game. Those are opposites. And a better way to think of complements is that there's no other possibility. When two things are complements, it means those two things together cover, cover every possible outcome. Here's another example, and this is from your Triola textbook. A typical question on an SAT test requires the test taker to select one of five possible choices, A, B, C, D, or E. Because only one answer is correct, if you make a random guess, your probability of being correct is 1 out of 5, or 0 0.2. And you'll notice that's the same thing as the percentage of correct answers, because out of five possible answers, only one is correct. So the percentage of correct answers is 1 out of 5, which means the probability that you randomly choose the correct answer is also 1 out of 5. So what is the complement of being correct? The complement of being correct is not being correct, or another way to say it is being incorrect. Well, now that we have defined what a complement is, how do we calculate the probability of a complement? And that's what this section is called, calculating the probability of a complement. Remember that if something is certain, it has a probability of 1. Well, the combined probability of two complementary events must be 1, since one or the other of the two is certain to occur. Remember, that's their combined probability. For example, it is certain that the student's answer on the SAT test question will be either correct or incorrect. So if you add the probabilities of those two events together, the sum of the probabilities of those two events must be 1. So put another way, here's the probability of a correct answer. We found out before that that was 0 0.2. At the moment, we haven't figured out what the probability of an incorrect answer is, so we're just going to put a question mark in there. But we do know that their combined probability must be 1. That's what we found up here. So we know that 0 0.2 plus some other number must equal 1. We're going to come back to this green stuff later. This allows us to calculate the probability of an incorrect answer by subtracting the probability of a correct answer from 1, which looks like this. So now we've just taken these same things and turned them around a little bit. We put the 1 on top, so the combined probability is 1. We know that from this up here. We know that the probability of a correct answer is 0 0.2. If we subtract the 0 0.2 from 1, we get the probability of an incorrect answer, which is 0 0.8. So, and this is very important, if two events are complements, you can always calculate the probability of one of those events by subtracting the probability of the other event from 1. And the last thing we're going to talk about in part one of this basic probability discussion is the notation for probability, and especially as it relates to the probability of complements. So this rule of complements, we can put this rule into a generic form by using something called notation. And there's a lot of notation in statistics. We just use a letter, for example, the letter A, to stand for any given event. 
the complement of that event is not A. Remember the example we had with the giants. In that case, we would say A stands for, what did we say, the giants winning their next game. And then not A would just mean the giants not winning their next game. And the not A is written as an A with a line over the top of it. So here's A. That's one statement. And its complement is A with a line over it. So the probability of event A is written P with a parentheses A after it. So the way you read this is the probability of A. And the probability of not A is written as P parentheses A with a line over it. So this you read the probability of not A. So if we keep going with our notation and under the rules we talked about above, the probability of A plus the probability of not A must equal 1, and 1 minus the probability of A must be the probability of not A. And for an example, we can look at these green boxes up above here when we talked about a correct and an incorrect answer. We can call getting a correct answer A, so that's the probability of getting a correct answer, the probability of A, plus the probability of not getting a correct answer, which is A with a line over it. Those two things must equal 1. So this is a generic statement of this rule using notation. And similarly, if we come down here, 1 minus the probability of A, which in this case was the probability of a correct answer, must equal the probability of not A, which in this case was the probability of an incorrect answer. So that is the end of this presentation.